Hey guys, this is Sam from Butterscotch, and today we're going to be making a food bowl, bowl of food. So on the left you can see the uh, art asset that was from the original Quadrupus Rampage from two and a half, three years ago, when I first started making art. And what we're going to do, because, you know, Quadrupus Rampage 2 is going to be a thing, is, uh, you know, update all these old, ugly looking assets, we can bring them in their glory back into the new game, but looking way, way better. So this walkthrough is just going to be, this time-lapse is just going to talk about a few of the things that I'm doing with Inkscape and how to do them yourself. And you'll notice there's a lot of, uh, if you watch my mouse, it very frequently will snap to the bottom left corner of the screen where things will happen. Uh, it actually advanced my hotkey usage using a program called Auto Hotkey to the point now where um, it controls not just setting opacity, which is down in the bottom left corner next to that O colon section down there, but also uh, the stroke, which I just changed just then, but um, for most of the time it's actually changed just with hotkey, so I never have to take my hands off the keyboard. So let's dig into this thing. So I knew I wanted to make just a much more interesting food bowl, and as I started working on this thing, uh, getting the dimensions worked out, I thought, okay, what if we, instead of having this big pile of essentially dog food, which is what it previously was, you know, Bingo's a starfish, and so we want to make him some, some nice sort of slop to put in this bowl, uh, and also with a couple doodads, just to make it a little more interesting than, you know, your sort of stereotypical food bowl. So what I'm doing just now is basically just roughing in what I think the shape of the final uh, chunks of food are going to be. And they're not perfect, and you'll see them change actually quite a bit as we go here. Um, but as I'm getting this bowl figured out. Um, but what I'm trying to do is basically just get a sense for how they're going to occupy the available space that I'm giving them... Um, in the artifact, which is it's 100 pixels by 100 pixels. So I got this sort of laid out and now I'm doing some work to try to fix some problems I generally tend to have with perspective stuff. And so I'm just doing a lot of addition and subtraction and then um, modifying the nodes and scaling the nodes to bend them around such that they look more like how I think they should look. You might see me occasionally reach up and uh, interact with one of the older artifacts that's up above. And that's because I'm actually grabbing the style and then you can hit Control shift v after you copied something, and it just pastes the style of that object. So it's a very fast way to move colors around or stroke uh, sizes or opacity and stuff. So I'm throwing some food specs on this bowl just to make it, you know, not quite so uh, clean. And the thing on the left that looks like a tree branch is going to be some sort of fish bone, and the thing in the back right will be a fish head. So now that I got at least the shape of the bowl sort of figured out, I'm like, well, may as well just go in here and hop in and, and do a few pieces of detail just to give this thing some dimensionality because it's feeling a little flat. Got these lines in here, fit them with the color a little bit. And you notice I oftentimes just start with very bright, like almost fully saturated blues or reds when I'm just doing the work. Um, I find it helps me pick better colors at the end. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just because it's super saturated and so I just want to make something that's also super saturated but things tend to be a bit more lively. Now I'm coming in here and you know slapping some lines in again to start uh, filling out what I think this form should look like and you'll notice that this essentially happens in phases so we just did the, the big shapes and now we're starting to do a bit of this detail work but they also inform one another so as we go and some of these details get laid in you'll see that the uh, the shape of the overall object starts to change as well, depending on where those details are placed, which is basically random. So, coming in here, dropping in some gross markings. And then for these finer details, we drop the uh, line stroke down to 0.5, stroke width. And this is something I just started, started doing more recently that I really like actually, is, is sort of almost like a stippling sort of thing, but just to add some more dimensionality to this stuff. And uh, my brother Seth, who uh, and Adam, both who programmed the games and the back and ar uh, architecture stuff, mentioned that the art style is slowly starting to evolve into this weird, this weird shared space between cartoony and real, where everything has cartoony proportions and sort of highly saturated color values and stuff, but a strange amount of detail, um, almost realistic 
level of detail that makes it like a high def cartoon. Which I'm totally fine with. So whatever. So I'm popping in here, dropping some of these lines in here. And again, you can just look at the look at the shape to figure out where, you know, from your perspective, they would sort of occlude one another and then drop the lines in there to do so. And here I'm, I'm dropping in some um, really quick just triangles and then subtracting them out of the form to give it a, more of a rugged sort of beat up look because again it's going to be a bone later on. There it's bone! Wow, colors! And after working with this for a bit I was like, you know what, I think this bull should actually be sort of a plasticky dog bull idea. We'll keep it at that, even though Bing's a starfish. And you notice I do have a bit of trouble with this fish head, which would be fun to see. So I cut it out so that way I have a you know, bit of a mouth to work with. And the idea is that it's sort of like some sort of chopped off chum head sitting in the back there. That has an eyeball. And I was making it, you know, alive until I remembered that, of course, it's doesn't have a body, so it should probably look dead. So that change will be coming here in a second. And you notice I oftentimes just grab the nodes and start wiggling stuff around. Um, we talk often about how we don't actually do concept art at all, and part of it's that it's it's kind of just built into the process. I think the concept, the concepting phase is, is done almost more verbally when we're just cracking jokes about, oh, what if the dog food had a huge fish head sticking out of it, or whatever. Maybe not so original in this case, but... The verbal jokes usually are where things start, and then it's just sort of a matter of wiggling stuff around until it works. So this is uh, me trying to see if I could throw a few scales on here to you know, simulate that, the idea that this is a scaly fish without having to draw all of them, and then realizing that because of my other line work, it's probably not going not gonna to mesh. Picking a different color that vibes more with everything here. And the fish is dead now because I realize it shouldn't be alive if it doesn't have a body. Come in here and, uh, and again, you'll watch this thing sort of go, essentially go through some concepting as we're going. Um, so I'm trying to get a mouth to sort of feel like it's there, but without really having to do with the work. And then I looked back and it looked like a weird 15 year old's mustache or something. So that it had to be destroyed pretty promptly. Uh, but instead of just getting rid of it, I actually started uh, binding the nose together and created Sort of some you know, fish lips for it, which is fun. And that really quick shape you saw was just me duplicating the object, drawing the shape outside of the object, and then multiplying it with the underlying one so that I just got the shape of the lips. Again, just sort of experimenting with various lines, just throwing them on there to see what happens, because you can always just hit Control Z. That's why digital art is amazing. This is a very angry dead creature, as I suppose most creatures probably are. And again, whenever you see me just whip the mouse like that, that's just because I'm trying to build a shape to cut. So it doesn't matter what it looks like outside of the object. And here I just accidentally pulled on this thing. And so I kind of flew off into this tangent of wondering if I could put a fin on this somehow. But it was a little too close to the head, as you're probably noticing. Though it could be one of those sunfish creatures. If anybody's not seen none of those, you should definitely Google it because they're freaky. It's like a disc with fins on either side of it. And that was when I decided not to do it. That whole diversion took, I don't know, a minute, 30 seconds. So we're essentially concepting as we're going and feeling it out. Now we're, it seems like we're getting where we want to go, so. Bit of fine toning with the node tool there. And keep in mind, if you're using the node tool, uh, you can hold control and click on a node to change the curve type. So that'll cycle it between corner or curve or whatever else. And here I'm basically doing some uh, structural work. And this is actually really important stuff that sort of gets breezed over is that uh, every so often in your project, it's really, really crucial to take a moment to make sure your groupings are all 
handled correctly because again we don't use layers at all so you want to make sure your groupings are done correctly so you can really easily change say all the shadows at once the all the objects that are in color lots of different stuff and if you let it just build up over the course of a project which will happen in a later time lapse of some moss uh it's 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 not fun so here i'm coming in here and after i've laid down the shadow um just laying down some spots to subtract out of the shadow to make it look like you know there's some some depth some difference in depth there for light to interact with so come in here do the same thing on this and again once it goes outside the shape i don't care because i'm going to delete it anyways so there's a duplication and a multiplication and that means that you just get the things that's inside of the object, which is great for handling the shadows and stuff. You'll notice that this, uh, this deep purple that we're using for the shading starts looking a little bad on the yellow. And yellow is a traditionally really hard color to make look really good with shadows because it just kind of turns ugly, like an ugly brown if you put blacks on it or purples on it basically anything I found aside from uh, sort of reds or greens which also make it look gross but in a good way on purpose um, so you'll see once I get this sort of uh, again that textured shading in we'll come back and start modifying the colors because they're actually going to be all of these shadows are actually going to be the same object because they'll be all added together right there and then we just added them all together and now it's got some cool shadows. And using colored shadows will elevate the look of your art a ton. I didn't realize that until after the original Quadrupus Rampage, which was shocking. Because apparently you learned that in like the first year of art school, but can't win them all. So we're coming back in here, you know, trying to drop in some other details to make this bowl look, I don't know, more reasonable, I guess. And this is going to be an interesting evolution as far as figuring out, you know, how to how to engineer this visually to do what we want, uh, to be interesting and not to be sort of a weird piece of plastic with some marks on it that don't really make sense. And again, as a you know, as someone who maybe has done a lot more art or even has a much more critical eye uh, there are certain parts of this that don't make sense from a shading perspective or whatever else um, but you gotta keep in mind that we're always we're always on this for a combination of speed and if it looks cool enough and if it crosses both of those marks then if these these little specks shouldn't have that much shading under them well that's just fine just happy little happy little food specks then become the Bob Ross of Inkscape Maybe I should do this actually with that thing about it. Alright, so moving the individual nodes, trying to get this uh, this little line of shading right, and this is actually gonna take pretty much as much time as it made me took me to make uh, most of this is to figure out the shading on the bottom of that thing, which we'll come back to in a sec. This is coming in and just uh, for the bone piece, again the bone is not actually pure gray. Uh, it's got a little bit of some some other color in there and then adding some white on there just to give it some shine and we'll add the highlight pieces on top there as well and just for this one and for uh, quadrupus rampage i simplified i've been simplifying the art a bit so that there's not two layers of highlights and shadows for objects and items it just adds a layer of complexity which while i think it makes things look nice it takes a little bit too long it doesn't add that much if you're being super good with your shadows Go back here and make this, you know, this dead fish head look all gross. Then I realized that it was full saturation, super duper blue, so we had to change it around. And keep in mind that things like yellow work really well on a, as a highlight, and especially on greens and blues. Come in here and add a little bit of details. And these these details are going to be the you know the span of a pixel, but. It's the accumulation of all the, you know, 100 by 100 pixels in this thing that make the thing look really, really good at the end of the day, so. 
it's important not to not to sweat them, but also to not, you know, forget them. As long as it's good enough. This is what I was talking about as far as uh, watching me flail around a little bit trying to figure out how the heck this bowl works. I haven't looked at any reference art or anything for this, so I'm just kind of just throwing crap in here until it looks good. What they do here is to create sort of a, a very varied depth feel to it, which you'll see once they all get in their proper place. Like I say, a whole lot of art is just tedium stuff, like moving nodes four pixels. So if you're into it, you know, good on you. Okay, so it's almost done, but something looks a little weird. So what I'm doing here is just duplicating that line, bringing it up a little bit, turning it into a path, and then turning it into a shadow. So I can add it in. So it almost looks good, and I realize, oh, that's why, because I need to add this final little sort of shadowy bit here. Coolio. That's it, 33 minutes.